Ever since the All Out Quad was previewed, I've had a little voice in the back of my head and it's been going something like this. Oi! Umi! Make it okay, Yadka Benz! Wah! So welcome to my first ever proper kit bash that I've ever done in my life. And you may think that I've taken the time to plan this out. Well, you're absolutely wrong. All I know is I didn't want these pointy bits on the end, so I clipped them off. So I followed the instructions building most of the body of the quad, and I had to get some sprue go out to just fill in a lot of these horrendous gaps there are. At this point, I thought it's probably time to start making it orky, so I started cannibalizing one orc bike and one all orc quad. Having added the back wheels from the kit, I then took one of the front mounts that's designed for the orc knob bike, got the clippers out, went to town to try and make it fit on that front plate of the quad. Next up, I wanted to do the front wheels, and I cannibalized these off the bike, so they've got the nice spiky orc look to them. Unfortunately, I had to use the wheel of another bike, so I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. In order to fix them to the Orlock quad itself, I had to cut the initial disconnector that's designed to go on the Orlock wheel and just glue it on there. Once the plastic melts it all together, it looks fine, and they fit perfectly. The exhaust was a real easy kit bash. All I did was clip off the end of the original exhaust and then attach one of the orc exhausts from the sprue. Nice and easy, no issues at all. Just make sure that glue is nice and dry. I wanted to make sure the rider fitted next, so I dry fitted the legs and they were fine, but I needed some foot plates. So again, I just took some off an orc bike, clipped them free, trimmed them down, and then basically just glued them to the feet of the orc. Once it resets in position, I glued the legs on. I'm really happy with how that's come out, actually. So it looks pretty good so far. Those handlebars might be an issue in the future. So I had to cut out the central rod running down through here in order to fit the gun. So all I did was trim it away, and then I just glued the gun to the back of the bodywork, as well as the axle, giving a nice clear support so it sits quite nicely there. I then thought it would be a really nice idea to put the ammo feed right at the top, and it would feed down through that faceplate. Two problems this. One, if it got hit, it would blow the orc's head off, which isn't so much of an issue. But two, I realised that actually by the time I put a biker body on there, it was really going to be in the way and you wouldn't actually be able to see over it. With that plan abandoned, I dry fitted the knob using blue tack to hold it in place. And now it was time for the gunner. So I thought the harpoon would look great. And what else I thought would look great was if we had a grot firing it holding on for dear life and the perfect grot comes with one of the orc buggies he's hanging off the back of it i think it might be the boom dacker snaz wagon not 100 percent sure but he fitted perfectly here so i trimmed his pistol off and just glued him on and attached the harpoon to the mount with a little grot in place i thought it's time to make those back wheels look a bit more menacing so a real simple thing here just cut off some of the sharp knife edges you get with the orc bike kit and glued them to the axles I was really unhappy with the gap I'd got on the handlebars here, so I needed to fix it somehow. So looking at the Orc bike kit, they actually had some tubing on it, so I cut this off and just ground it down a little bit with a file and attached it over here. It's not perfect, but I think it fits the Orc dynamic quite nicely. Now it was important that I added something to make this look like it's all connected, so I went around the bits box and I found some white metal tubing which I've had for absolutely years. I just used a bit of super glue really and attached this on, glued it all up, uh, and connected it down to the axle so it made it look like the handlebars were connected. And I also used it in other parts uh, around the bike just to make it look like the Orky controls were feeding into the original Orlock controls. The quad still needed something and that something was front wheel guards just to bulk them out a little bit and make them a little more dangerous. Now these come with the Orc bikes but I had no way of attaching them so I just cut a little bit of sprue off, glued this in place and then glued the plates to it. What I did find was that I need to really let the glue dry before I go and do the next stage on this part because otherwise uh, it all gets a little bit droopy and nobody wants that. With the kit bash complete, it's time to start painting. Now, because there's so much metallics on this, I just use lead belcher spray to prime everything and I don't want to take forever to paint this. So all I did was crack out the airbrush and I started spraying progressively brighter color green on the orc skin, spraying from above, create a nice natural shadow. Next up, I stuck with the airbrush and used a really dark gray to spray all the tires. I'm not worrying about overspray at this point, but I am trying to keep it as neat as I can. Now, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on how I'm gonna paint the orc and their wagon. So if you wanna know how I do it, stay till the end of the video and I'll put a link to my playlist where I show you how to paint loads of different orcs. 
with all those colors blocked in it's now time to go back and touch all the silver up i'm doing this with some lead belcher which obviously matches with the prime just taking my time around the areas i've airbrushed i use a brassy balthazar gold just to add a little bit of differentiation in metallic color across the model now you can do this if you want you don't have to use it sparingly it just adds a nice little accent with touch-ups and accents done it's time to shade the miniature and i'm going to use null oil with a nice big brush over the absolute entirety apart from those green fleshy parts of the orc flesh now this is designed just to shade everything all at once so be liberal but just make sure it doesn't pool too much make sure that's completely dry and then take some necron compound and a small dry brush and just bring some shine back to all of the metallics the brass as well as the silver i took a light gray paint and dry brushed up some of the tires as well just to add a little bit of a highlight now, once that was finished, I wanted to move on to the bodywork, and we're doing, in essence, a reverse chipping effect. Now, you've probably seen me use sponges to add chips. What I'm going to do with it this time is add paint. So there's two ways of doing this. The first is to rip up a little bit of sponge, dip it in some red paint, and then dab this onto the bodywork. The second way to do it is to do exactly the same technique, but use an old brush and stipple it on. And essentially what we're looking to do is focus towards the center of the body panels, because this will have the least amount of wear, leaving the exposed metal on the edges. When you're happy with how that looks, take a bright orange and do exactly the same thing, just focusing on the line between the silver metallic and the red bodywork, just to show that paintwork chipping and curling away. I gradually built up any white accents going from a medium to a light grey and then I used a final highlight of white but I used the same stippling technique I used on the red to make it look really patchy and worn. Now it was time to finish basing up the clothing, the leather straps, all those material parts on the model. So we painted the boots in black, we used a darkish brown for the trousers on both the grot and the orc and the leather straps. We then give them a little highlight using lighter colours, so grey for the black boots and any black areas such as the tubing. And also we just mix a little bit of bone colour into the brown to brighten it up and use that to create some sharp edge highlights. The final colouring we did was painting all the bone areas and this was mainly horns which have obviously been repurposed from something else. So I painted these first off with a nice ochre colour and then once that was completely dry I took a bone colour and just edge highlighted painting stripes along the horns up to the tip now if you want you can make those tips dark i'm going to leave them quite bright you can also use something like agrax earthshade if you want to add some differentiation of color the final step after basing was to use some weathering pigments to really add a nice dust effect to the wheels and the bottom of the quad and there we have it this all lock quad is complete and ready to dominate the ash wastes either a necromunda or speed freaks or general 40k make sure you watch this playlist to see how i paint all my other orcs and i will see you next time